introductions and really very, very pleased that the microphone quality, very pleased at the quality of the candidates. So certainly as the chairperson of the technology committee, I should have had to turn on a microphone, but yeah. um, okay, uh, you, everyone knows the unique quality of George Washington. He's the only president that didn't blame the previous administration, right? Okay, well, we don't have any George Washingtons here. Just remember the rules, okay? State your question at the microphone. Don't talk unless you're recognized by the chair here at the microphone. Uh, you can uh, direct your question at a candidate or candidates, but the other candidates, if they have something that they want to add, just like kind of raise your hand and you, you, you know, you can also be participatory. Uh, and uh, yeah, look at who's asking the questions, make sure first timers uh, are, are first and get their shot. And we're going to go three o'clock, uh, but maybe uh, maybe longer. I'm going to try to have the questions run about five minutes. Sometimes the question just kind of takes on life of its own. So after about five minutes, the question is kind of long in the tooth, as they say. OK, so uh, anyway, uh, does anyone need a little break before we start? OK, we know what that means. OK, so uh, would the first person who would like to ask a question just raise your hand, and this could be a really short meeting if nobody raised their hand. <laughs> nobody has a question. Okay, Mr. Watt, okay. So before you ask your question, make sure the microphone, give it a couple of taps, a whack. Uh, it's not working. Uh, turn it on. Then you have to turn on the button. There's actually two buttons on that one. There we go. May I go now, Josh? <laughs> Hi, I'm Scotty Watt from uh, Lot 400. I've lived here for 20 years. Okay, we've been talking about transparency, and which is a nice political term. And so, based on that, I want, I would like, really, I'd like to have Mr. Hayer and Mr. Vogel answer this question, but any of you can jump in. We're talking about transparency. Have you all attended finance committee planning meetings and board of director meetings to give your ideas to them when they were putting together budgets? so that the whole community would then understand what was kind of in the cards for the days ahead. Okay, thank you. Just a second. Uh, in other words, you, you address that question to Mr. Bobo and Mr. Kelly, right? So they would be the first to answer. Yes, sir. They would be the first two to answer. And then if any of the other board, uh, any of the candidates would like to answer, they, they can. But it would go in that order. You want to go now? You want to start? Go ahead. All right. I did attend the budget, um, I, what they call an open house, town meeting. I came to that. Um, we were all invited to the uh, strategic review of the draft of the strategic planning meeting. No, I don't regularly attend board meetings. Um, it's one of those things of, even if you come to them, it's hard to get recognized, and when you're only one voice, your opinion can just vanish into thin air. That's why I'm proposing the email surveys. Uh, the software that they bought that sends out the uh, newsletter electronically also has in it a thing called SurveyMonkey. It's a trademark from that company. And that's so they, we can send out surveys to people about important issues and get their opinions. The problem with coming to board meetings for a lot of people, I noticed someone who just had to run out of here because of a baby. Uh, if you have children, you, you, you have lives out there. People with kids in particular, you've got to go to sports practices and dance rehearsals and all this kind of stuff. You know, you simply don't have the time to take out of your schedule. And with using these electronic surveys, it's just a thing that pops up on your email. You can read it, you can state your opinion, and everybody finds out what it is. Um, you know, of course, with any survey, you've got to look at it in terms of how well, how well it's written. I do a lot of writing, so I wouldn't mind doing that. Um, and if you only get 10 people responding, it's hardly a landslide. But if you get 400 members responding, that's something that, uh, the board will need to look at because 
your voice is as important as any of the people who sit on the board. And I've just seen that in recent years in particular, the boards have kind of divorced themselves from the people, from all of the members. And this way, everybody has a chance to be heard. Howard? Yeah. Good old feedback. When we finally have time to go, I think four times. Well, like Pete, I was here to the strategic plan meeting that they had a couple of weeks ago. Um, the uh, budget meeting I didn't make because I had prior commitments. Uh, some of you may know I lost my wife a year ago. And uh, so up until then, you know, I had life things to take care of. But now being uh, without those burdens, I want to try and get back involved with the lake. So I, I want to be more involved and, and uh, uh, help out, see how things are being handled here. I don't know if that answered your question or not. Does anyone have any, any uh, additional input? Okay, next question. Uh, just raise your hand and. Uh, yeah, uh, okay. Go in. The, yeah, sure. Name and flat number. This is in the storm start. Mm -hmm. I'm Joanne Poor, 755. Um, I'm the neighbor of uh, Mike Haywood. And I was so unhappy with what he put in the newsletter area in, in the write-up because I knew he left things blank, and like your college and your what you're doing. And I want people to know. Um, I I don't know how you know what else could be done, but he has a you know marvelous background for things that we need on our board. Yeah, you have to ask, ask a question though. Something like you know, did you graduate from college? You know. Can we do something to get the word out? Uh, I don't know. You were very, you're very humble. I know that, and he doesn't like to brag about himself. So I can just imagine. Okay. Th thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, Alan, please state your name, flat number. Alan Kwiatkowski, seven thirty three. Can each of you uh, comment on uh, any lake uses you're thinking about uh, changing the status quo, add classes, remove classes? Is this addressed to all candidates? All candidates. Okay. Why don't we start down in the other end? <laughs> 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 Can you repeat the question? Yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you're just look, if you're looking to leave the lake as it is, just say status quo. If you're looking to add classes. Say what classes you'd like to add. You know, no. Um, Parasailing. Okay. Um, and if you're looking to remove things, nobody could wakeboard, wake surf, uh, ski, so forth on that line. I guess I'll go for. Uh, I think what you're asking, if I heard you correctly, is if you're going to add or subtract anything from the lake and the environment. And everything that we do. My personal point is on the lake, uh, we want to continue with the quality of the lake and, and upholding that for the fishing. The idea of parasailing or the idea of adding things is really intriguing to me. And if there is an interest, I am on that. Um, I would love to have other opportunities to use the lake. Uh, I know we can work with in conjunction of all and have everybody have ample time to use the lake in the facility or the facet that they want to use it in. And I think it would be great to add something like that as well. So for me, I'm all for expanding, not subtracting from the lake and what we do for it and with it. Okay. Um, I have to agree. I mean, the everything is virtually a volunteer and self-supporting. 
So therefore, if the interest is there, we definitely want to promote it or assist it in any way that we can. But um, again, it's going to be both people that want to create that and to uh, uh, drum up the interest. But it's definitely, we do not want to see the activities decline and paramount is the health of the, of the lake. Yes, so I definitely do not want to see anything taken away from current use of the lake. Um, if anything, possibly potential to add something, it would just have to be the right uh, circumstance. Um, I'm a member of the ski club. Myself and my family love to ski. My kids are starting to learn how to fish. They love to fish as well as paddle and sail. So we use the lake in just about any way that you can imagine. And also, I must say that the health of the lake this past summer was was really pleasant to see, and it was it was really um, great for the whole family. We felt healthy every time we used the lake. I personally would like to see. Oops. This better. I personally would like to see um, enforcement of the existing lake rules and the use of the lake. Um, I've been out in the lake when it's been dangerous with uh, people not abiding our existing rules. Um, I like to see more enforcement. I would like, not like to see any activities taken away. Um, and my biggest concern is the safety of our residents, especially the children who are out there enjoying the lake while motorboats and other activities are taking place. So that's my concern is the safety for our kids and other people who use the uh, lake. Okay. Um, as far as, as the condition of the lake, I think we all are interested in the condition, staying or improving, but doing it wisely. Uh, the lake is the major as asset for our community, both for resale and for uh, recreation. So we need to do what we can to try and maintain a better uh, condition on the lake. Uh, if you read my bio, you would probably notice that I spent 30 years with the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. And so recreation is uh, uh, very important to me for people to be able to get out and recreate. Uh, the lake being a limited size, we have to make sure that the activities that we allow are going to be safe for those participating as well as the residents. So, you know, uh, increasing the activities is great. We see a lot of people out on, on uh, sailboards and, and uh, kayaks and so forth, even the water yoga which uh, people are starting to do. And I think that's a great thing. But for, for bringing out uh, uh, things like skidoos and or sea dews and, and things like that, they need to be researched well before we start letting activities like that go on, unless it's for an, a special activity, you know, for the regatta and so forth. We had those, those fellows out here with those jet platforms and that's great you know but that was under uh, controlled uh, situations so you know that's that's the way i look at it for those items the lake is our single greatest asset it is the reason most of us bought homes out here uh, i mean i don't know if i would have bought the same house if, it, if that lake wasn't sitting out there. I don't want to see, going back to the way it was, what, two summers ago when we had Green Slime Lake out there? Um, so I can't tell you I'm not a marine biologist if the, the, the systems that they're using right now are the best thing to do. I'd like to look into it, 
but as far as uh, lake safety goes. But it also brings us up to the question of the dam and the spillway and the whole business with the Department of Environmental Resources. Um, we're paying, we've all been having 150 bucks extra in our dues each year to build up a fund to, uh, in case we do have to build the new spillway. But I think something that I'd like to know are what are the other alternatives? What if, how down is the lake? Yeah, excuse me. Uh, I don't think this is part of the actual question. Uh, he's going off on a tirade on something else right now. Oh, I'm not yeah, I'm stick, to the, okay. stick to the uh, topic, yeah, please. I'm, I'm, I'm the chair, so I'm going to let him go. Uh, the, the, the question was addressed to the entire panel. There are uh, six candidates. Uh, two minutes each would be ten minutes, uh, so I'm going to let him go for, for a bit more. Okay. All right, thank you. But what are the alternatives? How far down does the lake have to be to shut up DER? No one's ever told us. Now, a great idea that's out there that I heard from uh, Tom over here at that budget me meeting was the need to run a television camera down the drain pipe to see if it's in good shape and perhaps changing it so the you open the water from the top as opposed to the bottom. If there is something wrong, some kind of liner can be put in there. Am I correct there? All right. I can tell you from my years at FEMA and working with dam safety, Nothing makes an earthen dam fail faster than leakage from the inside. And if uh, that pipe is leaking, that's where we could be looking at a very dangerous situation. So I think that's one to maintain the lake that's really money well spent. Okay, uh, thank you. What, uh, this possibly will lead to another question that someone else will open the question up. Uh, would you like to come to the mic, please? Because uh, yeah, I don't have a question related to that. Excuse me? My question is not related to that. Well, but it doesn't have to be related to that. It's just, yeah, it could be any question. And the mic seems to have uh, <laughs> So you might have to give a little bit of a, uh, a little help. Okay. My name is Patty Brown, Sandway, 930. Um, in the last year or so, well, I guess year and a half, um, the bylaws that govern the neighborhood were being looked at because they have been written so long ago, and many of them are getting outdated. I was interested in being on part of that committee, and I was told that they meet at, on Mondays at 3 o'clock. Nobody that's not stay-at-home mom or not retired can really make that. <laughs> so. What would this committee do to ensure that my voice was not silenced? Do you have any particular candidate no. at whom you want to get? Okay, uh, why don't we, we started with, uh, hey, okay, Mike. Sure. Um, sure, so I think, you know, any time that we have people that are interested in improving our community or adding input, we definitely want that to be there, to be a part of the decision making, to be a part of the guidance. Mm -hmm. So I, my recommendation would be that you get your core people that are going to be a part of the committee, and from there you work out a time that works for that committee to meet. I don't know if that's the current practice, but it sounds like one that would make sense to me. You know, I understand the, that's a great question, but <laughs> uh, I, I do understand that a, a large part of the people that do volunteer are people that are retired. And, and I thank them for all that service. Um, you know, one of the hard things is to find a time that's conducive with, with both type of schedules. But um, just like he was saying earlier here, uh, you know, it could be a Saturday or, or later in the evenings to make that work. Um, I, I definitely want everybody's voice to, to be heard, especially if it comes to something that you are particularly qualified in doing. For us to throw away or not make that a important part or to get you a time slot that'll work for you is an injustice to everybody. So yes, uh, I know it's hard and difficult, but I would definitely work on any committee that I'm in part of on the board to make sure that everybody who wants to have a voice will have a time conducive for them to do that. I'm right with you. The meeting should be when everyone who wants to come to them can come to them. Afternoon meetings, um, 
I think that's wrong. They should be in the evening or on a weekend where everyone who wants to be involved in a committee like that can be. Um, the, community, the meetings that I've gone to, the technology committee, and I've also sat in on some other committees, and in every instance, the next meeting was always scheduled to the unanimous approval of those that were there. So as the board controls the committees, the committee should also adhere to the wishes of their members and schedule in that manner so that there is no exclusion of a particular point of view. I'm microphone challenged, I'm sorry. Oops, see, I told you. Um, I'm in agreement with everything that's been said here. I would also uh, add that getting more people involved on our committees opens the door for more uh, people involved in our lake and the decisions and another way that we can do communication and transparency. Is there a next question? Um, please come up. Richard Ginevra, 595, and in the interest of full disclosure, a member of the present Board of Directors. Uh, this question is to all of you. In a sentence or two, could you give us your personal evaluation of the present governance of Lake Heritage? Why don't we start uh, at that end uh, with uh, Stan, and we'll work our way to Peter, and because uh, everyone is involved and probably wants to participate. This is kind of a tough one with two sentences, but I will do an attempt for you. Um, I've had the positive. I've been to a few board meetings, and I've sat in a few of the uh, um, early meetings. Um, I see a lot of dedicated uh, individuals. Um, working somewhat cooperatively. Um, I see that they have um, a great outlook and insight, um, but maybe possibly overworked. Uh, there is quite a bit of stuff that you are trying to cover and handle, and uh, I can see that there may need to be a different look or approach and uh, um, some help provided to the board because they have been doing a decent job of doing almost the impossible. There's a thousand folks or houses here. It's, it's hard to have uh, um, a unilateral agreement, um, but I think some new vigorance and, and, and help for the board is what is needed um, to help refresh. And I know I want more than two, uh, two sentences. Sorry, sir. I've only been here two years, so my uh, they're uh, lim uh, limited on the observance. But I will say this: when we first came to the uh, association, we drove in. It was at night in the winter, and it was about as dark as you could believe. And in two years, I'm seeing better lighting. I'm seeing uh, uh, places where security, where they're looking at ways at automating. Uh, what might be extensive manpower um, committees I've, I've sat on and listened to. So I am seeing progress, but I agree they're overworked and they're very dedicated and they are trying. But again, it's uh, you know how hard it is to uh, please a thousand people. So that's my observation. Uh, so, yeah, my perception is. Uh, Bunch of people dedicated, really willing to help the neighborhood. I have seen improvements over the past few years, which is really nice to see. Um, I think there's also some room for um, some communication around what's what's going on and what's occurring to help some of those people that don't reach out and attend the meetings and inform themselves. So really, um, things that are already going on that we could share that would make the community feel better about uh, everything else. Thanks. The workshops and the meetings I've attended, um, I see a group of, as everyone has said, dedicated, dedicated people, but also a group who sits and 
takes time to thoughtfully um, make decisions and how their in decisions would uh, will impact the community at large and um, and they think about the monetary uh, impact of it and I was truly impressed with the quality of discussion and um, and the respect that they showed each other while discussing an, an issue. Okay, uh, as everybody else has said, you know, we've got 800, 1,000 different residents out here, 800 or 1,000 different ideas, what, they, what they're looking for, and we've got a board here that's trying to take care of everyone, but I, I think that uh, in doing that, we get uh, the, uh, the regular board members in here year after year after year. And I'd like to see some new blood come in with some new ideas. And so that's what I want to try and do is, is to inject some new ideas. Uh, because there's always different outlooks on things. So that's that's my opinion. The way I feel. Hello. Yep. All right. In terms of governing, you know, does governance, you know, the boards haven't done bad. I, you know, haven't done badly. But I think in some senses they are operating in a vacuum because they don't really seem to actively solicit community input, and I think they've been quite over extravagant with spending our money. Next question. Uh, Rick, please come up. State your name, lot number. Yeah, Rick Kranzizi, 754. Um, general question. Building actually on what Alan asked. I'd like to ask everybody to provide uh, your vision for the community going forward over the next couple of years. I'd say that in the context of Alan asked specifically about the lake, but the community itself. Are you happy with where we are? I'm on the special, I've been on the special projects committee. We've got a lot of good ideas, ways to improve the community. They're going to cost money. We think they're worthwhile. We're going to come to the board and say we'd like to implement these. I've heard some people say they think the dues are too high without a lot of facts. Uh, being provided, so I'd be curious, Peter, if you have any kind of uh, research that says our dues are high compared to other homeowner associations that, that you've researched. Um, Howard, you said the salary increases have been higher than other communities. I'd like to know what our increases are the past several years and how they compare to other homeowner associations you've researched. But basically, I'm just asking, are you happy with where we are? Are you willing to invest more money in this community to improve it, or do you think we've done enough? Now let's just be happy with what we have. Thank you. Okay, that's a fairly nuanced question. Uh, let me see if I can get it. Okay. So in other words, uh, you're asking Peter uh, his source of information and if he thinks the dues are too high and if we're, if he's willing to increase them if if we need more things. That, that's sort of it. And then it flows to Howard, pretty much the same question. Are the dues too high? If you're, what is your source of saying too high? And is he willing to increase the dues if new, we need new things? Is it that, did I kind of get that? And then anyone else, if they, those specifically were, you asked these candidates specifically, or all the candidates? Well, I just said, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear I just said all the candidates. Oh, all the candidates. Okay. Happy with the current. Right. Okay. Right. Are they willing to increase dues? Okay. So and you and it includes and your willingness to increase dues if we need more things. Okay. So why don't we start with with Peter Howard and then anyone else who wants to jump in, uh, can. All right. Most of the research I've done has just come off of the uh, Lakes website. You know, get a you get a uh, password from George here, and you can. Uh, look up all kinds of fun stuff in there about budget. Now, I have all this information that this is a five-year capital plan. 
uh, that I printed off from there. And this is where I'm getting a lot of my information from. Uh, looking ahead to 2008, uh, 2018, sorry. Some of the things they're talking about are $30,000 for a Ford F-250 pickup truck with plow. Why does it have to be a Ford F-250? Has anyone heard of competitive bidding? $14,000 for something called a skag mower. I don't even know what that is, but I'm sure someone can tell me. $5,000 to pave the parking lot at the ball field. I don't see doing that. Um, $98,000 budgeted for new playground equipment. Sounds pretty extravagant to me. Um, and all this when we have a million dollars sitting in the bank. Now, as far as other communities, the only other community I'm familiar with is where my in-laws have their uh, house in a gated community up on Cape Cod. Now, we are talking multi-million dollar houses in there. Uh, some of the ones along the beach, last time I saw one listed, like five million bucks. Mm. Now, their dues are about $350 a year. Security. The only time they have a security guard there checking who comes in and out are on weekends during the summertime. So people don't come in and use the little beach that we have in there. So, you know, that's what I can compare it to. And there are a lot of year-round residents in that community, as well as people who just uh, come and, you know, come on weekends or come in the summertime. So these are some of the things where I'm seeing where it's like, uh, money that has been spent, and I don't know why they're spending it. You don't realize the floor you've got your feet on right now costs thirty-five thousand dollars. Do um, but at that meeting we all got invited to the strategic plan meeting. There, our manager Mike proposed hiring a half-time person to try to increase the use of this facility after they spent so much money on it and make us all feel good about the community center. I don't think Lake Heritage really needs a social director where we are not a cruise ship. Okay, thank you. Howard. Might as well get up here and not have to worry about the feedback from the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I think that uh, uh, a lot of my concerns come from the years that I've been here and seeing our dues continually increasing without seeing a lot of, of uh, uh, benefit from it uh, with the community, the residents, the number of residents has grown, but the community itself hasn't. We still have the same amount of roads, we still have the same amount of rec areas, yet we've got more people, more expense, more management, and you know, at a status quo with the conditions. So these are the things that I'm looking at. Um, as far as my vision and dues versus special projects, um, it would be on case by case uh, uh, as far as I would look at what the community as a whole would benefit as far in comparison to the cost. Um, it's kind of hard to address that question without knowing specifics. <laughs> so as, as far as the things the way things are going I, I believe things are moving in the right direction I am I am all for enhancing amenities that we already have as well as you know adding to that um, the library of things that we we currently have available to us sounds like the survey that went out to the community is a good start in helping understand what people want and to help prioritize and just seeing what the strategic planning committee has done so far, they're really leveraging that to strategically think towards the future, which I think is great. 
I would like to address my first house back in 1975 was in a community just like this, except it didn't have the uh, lake. And those cotton pickers down in Owings Mills, it was $100 a month for the community fee just to clear the snow so and mow the lawn. So I do understand about, I'm on a fixed income, so I know about, you know, not wanting to see things go up. But on the other side, I just don't think we are as, uh, as dire as, as might be portrayed. But on the other side, whatever we have belongs to you, and we have to protect it. Now, there's a lot of things that I'd love to see eventually looked into. Could we was be there a way to automate the back gate so we can go out the other way or in? May not be possible, but it's a thought. Is the, that the, uh, the we're labor and that the human beings that we've hired? There are areas where we absolutely must have people. But is there any other mechanization that might be able to assist um, in uh, people coming in and out? So I'm not ruling anything out, but I am saying that we've got to also always look at different alternatives. Okay, uh, well, first of all, um, I, I'd like to see if we can promote a little bit more what we already have and, and, and use it to a little bit more of an extent. Um, we do have a lot of nice facilities here on the lake and, and for the community, but um, I, and I'd like to see the community center used for more than just a meeting a month. You know, um, this is the community's property. Um, we usually have paint nights, trivia nights, aerobics, whatever here, daily. Um, and that's what we have. Um, and then if there is other additional things that people would like to have, you know, I brought up a couple years ago when we were doing the dog park, you know, a community garden. You know, why can't we have the power lines there? Use that area as a community garden so we can have a 10 by 10 or 10 by 20. Plant flowers, whatever it takes for you to enjoy the outdoors and have a good time. Low cost additional things. Um, to me, um, I, I know we do need to promote what we currently have and, and learn how to maintain what we do have um, in a more responsible manner to free up funds to add. But we need to take care of what we have and actually use what we have now currently. Thank you. That was the record question. That took 10 minutes and 17 seconds to uh, answer the other previous ones, 8 minutes and 32 seconds, in case you think I'm not counting. Uh, okay, do we have another uh, another uh, question? And please state your name and phone number. <laughs> Any other questions? Otherwise, this could be yes. Please step up to the microphone and name and phone number. And although my lot 959, I'm Peter's daughter. Now, one thing that was mentioned in uh, Pete's section in the blue packet that I'm curious to hear the uh, other candidates' opinions about is bringing back the yard sales. What are your opinions? Would you be in favor, if not in favor, of bringing them back? That goes to all candidates, and including. Yes. Why don't we start with uh, Stan, okay. and we'll run down. Um, okay, uh, I only was uh, living in the lake for about two or three of them. Um, it is a pretty big community-wide thing. Um, I, I understand why they decided to not do the, um, to do it anymore. Um, I am open to uh, bringing it back, but I do also understand the concerns that the board does have for traffic issues and safety. And I think if we come to an agreement on those, I would be willing to see it come back. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, it's all right. <laughs> I've been married 50 years. I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> I. I only had one experience with the uh, garage sale or the yard sale when I we came in on a Saturday and all of a sudden there was more traffic than we knew what to do with. Um, I'm also in favor of it if it can be done in a safe manner. And it may be that it can't be done on the major side, on major roads, 
There may have to be some other alternative or locale worked on, but in general, I think it's a good idea for uh, that people have that opportunity. Um, yeah, so I am in favor of the yard sale. Uh, does need to be executed with sort of mitigation in place to ensure the safety of the community. Um, I've been involved with it before as part of the ski club mm -hmm. and feel that uh, it not only, I think even more so than people coming to the outside um, to shop around at the yard sale and help us get rid of some of the items that we don't need anymore and get money. Mm -hmm. It's also great within the community. I enjoyed going to neighbors yard sales and picking up items for our family. So I do believe it's it's a good thing to support and have. Just needs to be done in the right way for the community. Um, I have no problem with the yard sales, and I agree with everybody else. If we can do it in a manner where it doesn't cause a safety hazard with traffic, I'm all for it. It's always right, making you get back up. Not a problem. I need the exercise. Could get rid of a little of this. Um, I've been here ever since they've started the yard sales, and the yard sales are great. I think a lot of a lot of people enjoy participating in it. But on the other hand, uh, the last one or two that we've had, uh, I know there is a serious traffic problem, and I had an instance, a neighbor. One of the yards, one of the residents was out walking while we were having these yard sales and heart, had a heart attack. And they had difficulty getting the ambulance in here. It's an important factor. We've got to make sure that we have a way to control the traffic. We have a lot of recreation areas around here. And I'm sure that it wouldn't be a problem with having people park in there. The problem is getting the people to abide by that and go park in those areas. Uh, I, I think the yard sales are great. You know, and everybody wants to get rid of a little bit of something. And it's not bad for a little bit of jingle in your pocket, but uh, we need to do it. We have to do it safely. So it needs to be a lot of thought into it. And no, I didn't ask my daughter to ask that question. Uh, I agree with everything that everyone down here has said, but I think last year the board went to the extreme. And just this, a, form, our, a former security chairman came in and basically said that unspeakable horrors would happen if we had it. But there were some good suggestions that came out of it. One was make her for during the yard sale. We're talking six hours out of one day of the year. One suggestion was make heritage drive just one way for those six hours. Um, other people complained about oh the traffic's backed up to Route 97. It's backed up to Sheets. Well, that's largely because security had to register everybody. It's sort of like someone comes up. I'm here for the yard sale. Here's a map. Go. Here's a map. Go. Um, and the board to do it wanted 30 volunteers to help move traffic along. Well, 30 volunteers is a hard thing to get out here. And especially those are people who probably want to sell stuff. And when we're spending 225 to $50,000 a year on security, I think they can afford to bring in the, have their personnel available for those six hours on one day of the year. I know I've got a garage full of stuff left over from last year that I still want to sell. Okay. Uh, no, but one final issue. Why can't, the, it's great to have a community yard sale. People come out here, they see Lake Heritage, they realize we're not just a bunch of crazy elites, elitist snobs, and they look at our community and they see houses for sale and think, maybe this might be a nice place to live. And look at the nice people we talk to who are selling stuff. But one final thing. Why can't we just have yard sales whenever we want to? If I want to have one, if the Kwoods want to have one, if the Ferreras want to have one, if any of you want to have one, why can't we just have one if we want to? And put an ad in the paper to say, 
you know, yard sale, and I'll use my own address, 959 Johnson Drive at Lake Heritage. Come on out. Why, why is there a rule against this? I don't know. Thank you. Another question? Uh, please come to the microphone. Name and lot number. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Len Ferrara. I've lived in the lake for 44 years. And first of all, I have to address the latest issue. I, too, was not opposed to the yard sales. However, the last time that we discussed the yard sale issue at a board meeting, open board meeting, was the night that a house burned down here in the lake. But you have to state a question. Has to be an question. Well, yeah. Okay. So let me say this. I'm not here to ask questions because it appears that these questions are becoming very confrontational. What I'm here to talk uh, about. This is not a discussion. It's not a debate. Please sit down. <laughs> or, or frame it in a form of a question. Well, okay. Why would you? This is a first of all. This is a private community. So why do you want to open the doors for other people? Everybody that moved in here under so is a private community, so I would be able to doors and let other people in here into a private community. Thank you. Uh, does it address to any particular no, It's addressed to me. Okay. Well, you, you say this, it's a private community, but uh, we all have things delivered. We all have friends that come to visit. We're not, you know, people can come in, you know, we have the security down there, and they're supposed to uh, at least they used to jot down things, and they used to give you little, little uh, wind, well, mirror tags to put on your car. They don't do that anymore. It's, you know, it's a private community, but that's still my house. And if I want someone to come visit me, the last thing I want is somebody down there at a gatehouse telling them they can't come. Okay, thank you very much. I've got another question. Uh, let me, okay. can, you, can you just, oh, uh, does anyone sure. have, we have another question? The first timers, okay, okay. I have another question. Every time we have these these annual meetings to introduce the new board members, uh, the, the potential board members, the attitude is the board, the board, the board. Like we've got people coming in from outer space have no idea what's going on here. They're not spending their own money, they're just spending somebody else's money. What do you see as the positive things that the, that the past boards have done in comparison to all the negative things that we're talking about today? So you? I would like to have- Is that everyone? Is that everyone? Every, everywhere. Okay, why don't we start with uh, Stan and work our way up. Uh, oh, first of all, I would like to say that the board has done a good job. They have, um, you know, you look at the lake clarity, uh, the big issues with working on the dam and dealing with the uh, uh, Penn State here, Pennsylvania law uh, for the dam recognition, all the work you guys have been doing on that. I've been to quite a few board meetings, um, and I know that these are long, hard, thought out um, solutions or working towards solutions. Um, I haven't had to complain. My snow has been plowed. My, uh, my road looks in great condition. Um, you know, I haven't been stopped at the gate and not let in, so it hasn't gone to the extreme in my eyes. Um, you guys, uh, the board has done a good job. I'm just saying that I think, um, you know, you, you need a little help. Um, you guys have been on the board a long time. I appreciate all that hard work. Um, but I, I, I'm willing to help carry that torch a little bit for you guys. Um, a little, maybe more light work. Um, whatever you might need that I can add. But I do think the board has not ever strayed from doing what they believe in their heart is the best thing for this community. And I'd like to say thanks to that. I have to uh, echo that, those words exactly, because I lived, as I said earlier, I lived for 40 years in downtown Baltimore. The last thing in the world I want to see is the security guard be taken off the front. I mean, when I look at uh, the, the reports and I see the kind of what we call crime, it's nothing. And we were paying to have private security. 
so down in uh, Baltimore. So I'm saying that I agree that the board has tried very, very hard and with very, very honest uh, direction. As I said, I've seen positive things with the lighting. I've seen positive things at the meetings, and I and I uh, I think it is a be an honor to try to continue that tradition. Um, yeah. So for me, I um, gosh, where to start? Uh, while I was uh, living out in Chicago, it sounds like maybe in the neighborhood at the time the financial financial house and state of the, the community was maybe headed in the wrong direction. And I think it, it has made a turnaround. And that's that's due to some tough decisions that the board did have to make. And and I'm actually running for the board. I'd like to continue the neighborhood moving in a positive direction. Um, if, that, if that makes sense, not really change things drastically. I, I'm unsatisfied with the way things are going, but think I can even further help enhance um, the experience of our neighborhood and the way that we're going. <laughs> the bottom line, we are all residents of this lake community, and we all want the best for it. We may come from different perspectives or opinions, but we all want what is best for our community. As for the positive things that the board has done, I am so impressed with the strategic plan that's been worked on that came from a survey and came from the ground roots were from all the residents' uh, thoughts and opinions of what they thought uh, was needed for our community. Um, and the strategic plan uh, does a wonderful job of bringing all those thoughts together and uh, making a plan to take us uh, further ahead and improving our um, lifestyle here at the lake. So I applaud the board for that hard work. I don't mind getting up. <laughs> no, stop being like this. Okay. <laughs> now, let's do it regularly. <laughs> now, uh, as everybody else has said, I, you know, nobody is nobody's out here to to say anything against the board. Uh, the board has tried to do the best that they they can in their in their own uh, in their own eyes. Again, we've got a thousand residents. We have got a thousand ideas, and I think that everybody having an idea, an opportunity to get on the board and and speak their thoughts and and do their share. To help this community, I, I think that we need to get more involvement and not have the regular uh, people in here and losing sight of what everybody else wants. Boards have done lots of good things in the past, but you got to look at what do you want out of the board. Or what do you want out of LHBOA? Let's let's not even talk about the board. Let's talk about the the association in general. I mean, they paved. When we first moved out here, very few, all of the roads were not paved. Heritage Drive wasn't even paved all the way around the lake. None of the back streets were. All right, the streets all got paved. Good thing for everybody. Maintaining the lake, good thing for everybody. That's why we move here. Maintaining the common areas and the pool and plowing the streets, but I have been seeing things on the uh, Lake Heritage Issues Facebook page that a lot of people are saying their streets are not getting plowed or plowed well. That I would see as a major concern. You know, there's been a lot of improvements, but personally, I think they've been getting just a bit extravagant when it comes to spending money on things and hiring personnel that may or may not really be necessary. So I'm just trying to rein that in so this place can stay affordable for everybody, us, us fixed income types, the young families, everybody. And I think they've been just getting a little out of control with that. And that's kind of, that's one of the main reasons I'm running. As a road suggested, any home griping about it is get on the board and do something about it. Thank you, Dean. 
Okay, uh, is there another question? Uh, Jay? Yeah, lots of questions. Jay, uh, yeah, we have a question. A first timer. No, a first timer. First timer. Come on, Jay. Hi, I'm, I'm Jay Schmidt, 404 um, Heritage. Uh, owned out here since 84, lived here since 97. Um, missed last year's when the board ran. Probably last five questions. I kind of got a two part question. One time I already stand, one just simply yes or no. Everybody wants to run for the board. It's a thankless job. Three of you suckers are going to get it. <laughs> I commend the board. I'm glad. I sit on a lot of committees here. So the question is three of you aren't going to get on a committee. Are you going to get involved? Because the board member is the fall guy. That's the guy that sits out in front of everybody and takes all the heat and the crap. I sit on the committee and so do a lot of people here sit on committees and we hide behind it and go, Tom Anthony, he's the bad guy, he made the choice. But there's a lot of really smart people in the community that are, are, are going to a lot of committee meetings. There's, there's so many hours put into the decisions and finance and stuff. So my question is, one is just the yes and no answer, is if you don't get on, what committee are you getting on? Or are you just gonna go by till the next time the board comes on? The other one is one I kind of thought about, I'm gonna make it personal, because everybody's talking about the, the community moving forward. And I, I know nobody here sells this community as much as I do because of my business. Spent five hours the last two days giving lake tours, telling people how great the lake is. But in my life, I choose to live in sin. I'm not married, but I have three kids in my house. They can't use the pool. We've got these antiquated rules and regulations. Technically, they're not allowed to use my paddle boards. They're not allowed to do the, they're not allowed to go to the pool. They're not allowed to take community events unless I'm there. And my kids, I take them to the doctor, not genetically, but so I, I want to know how you feel about rules like that because I'm not alone here. Uh, I have a house across from me, three generations live in. Everybody gets to use the pool because there's a genetic hookup or somebody said I do. I've been with my kids for five years that I raise um, and I can't take them to the pool without getting a guest pass. So just a yes and no in the first part and then you're feeling on the other. Sorry, okay. uh, so Jay, if I, can, if I can clarify the question, the first part is uh, what if, if they didn't get elected? What committee would they serve on? Would you get involved in? I mean, cer involved? certainly people would be obvious. Get in the or finance committee. I sit on the finance Or would it be like if they do get elected, what committee would they prefer to chair? Well, that's right, because there's a whole committee behind every board member. Right. So the people that sit on the board are taking all the crap at the meetings for everything done. Right. There's six, eight, ten, twelve. The Lake and Dam's gotten very popular. There's a lot of smart people getting involved with Lake and Dam. Um, Okay. Rick Francis, okay. I've like, spent years, years, years doing Lake and Dam. It, 15 years ago, we started the aeration program. Okay, okay. Things don't happen this year. Right, there's, there's tons, right. Of, there's tons okay. of room for them to get involved if they're not on the board. So okay. my question um, is... Okay, the question is, okay, uh, and I'll try to interpret it. If you get elected, what committee would you perhaps chair? Uh, and if you do not get elected, what committee would you either continue to participate in or join? Uh, why don't we start with you? Starting with me. All right, well, Lake and Dam fascinates me, especially with the whole business with the uh, spillway and uh, dealing with DER. I know enough about government relations and emergency management that that's something that fascinates me. Um, communication, certainly, I, I have a background in communications. I've done it a lot. I could continue doing that. I managed three, I'm an administrator on three different Facebook pages right now, so uh, it's something I'm used to. Uh, and the fine, uh, you know, I'm not much of a bookkeeper kind of thing, but, you know, financing does fascinate me, but when it comes to that, I'm more of a forest person than a tree person. I'm more big picture than little tiny specifics when it comes to money but on Lake and Dam with governmental regulations. Now back to your other thing. I think that's appalling that you have kids that live with you in your house. Is that right? And they, you can't get them pool passes? Peter, just, uh, please don't, uh, no dialogue, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to clarify what the, what the man was saying, so he answered the question properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, you have the first part first. The first part is a very, very simple question. Uh, I will try I, I, I answer to that. the second part. Let's be just really on the committee part right now. All right. Uh, well, the committee, whatever committee cooks up all of these rules, yes, they need to be looked at. Now, some of these things would require, some things would require a bylaw change. And at least according to what I remember, that would require a significant vote from the membership to do a bylaw change. 
So uh, uh, that's something that would be hard to do, but for certain things it would probably be worth doing. All right, on you, Howard. Before we go, we're just doing the committee. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the bylaw change uh, and the domestic partner. That's what we're getting into as a second, as a part B. Okay. So oh, this is just part A. A. No, no. Just let's, let's just try, let's try to make it simple. Part A, just what committee would you chair? And if you don't get elected, what committee either would you continue to be involved in or would you get involved? Okay, I'd like to use my experience if I get on the board. I was a mechanic, heavy equipment mechanic for 50 years. So I think being in the maintenance department would be a valuable place. I was in law enforcement, so security would be a valuable place. I think these are things that I could help out. As far as working for the lake, I've done tons of volunteer work. Len and I, back when in the early days, we did uh, all kinds of stuff. You know, uh, we helped down there at the entrance to the lake just recently, clearing it. So, uh, I've got involvement in my past. Thank you. Um, yes, definitely. I would uh, love to work on the committees. I'm interested in technology um, and finance. Um, and um, I'm, I was working the first eight years that we lived here. And just being recently retired, um, I'm able now to get more involved. And I started with by joining the women's club and the fishing club. And so my next step is with committees. Yeah, so the answer is a yes. So, um, yeah, if not, uh, if I don't uh, get a seat on the board, I would still like to participate in committees. Uh, I would have passions around lake and dam, uh, recreation, pool and pool house. Um, if on the board, I think it would come down to, you know, where is there a seat? Um, you know, it, it, I'm just willing to help out. So, um, if on the board, it'd be where there's an opening. Um, if not, it would be the three that I mentioned before. Uh, my answer is yes, because I would just continue to work with the technology committee. And if I'm elected to the board, then uh, my expertise transcends the financial or, and the uh, um, both the financial and uh, the technology aspect. Yeah, so if I am elected or I'm not, you know, my strengths have always been, you know, maintenance uh, related. Uh, the dam and lake is something I'm interested in. I don't have the degrees that I need to be the financial guy, but I do, if I'm not elected, would like to be involved with that. I do have some creative ways. Um, I just need some way to keep me easy on the, on the gap so I don't get in trouble legally, but we do have a lawyer with us, so we're good. Um, as far as the other situation, um, I felt your pain. Um, first year we lived here, we had the same situation. Um, I, I am for trying to come up with a solution to solve that. Uh, part B of uh, the question was, um, if you are the owner of a uh, lake property, you have lake rights, but the lake rights do not pass uh, to uh, your domestic partner, children of your domestic partner, if they are not related by blood or marriage. So the question is, wh where would you stand to change the bylaws? Uh, what is your attitude toward that? Some of you did already answer it, but perhaps the clarified answer you'd like to be clearer. Just always stand it. Well, to me, um, you know, honestly, you know, as society changes, as circumstances changes, and, and just the evolution of the human mankind, things are changing from what when the initial was written. You know, be it a statement that says, hey, up until the age 18, you have those privileges as the person you're living with that is extended to you. So these kids can use the pools. They can go to the parks. They can play basketball down here. They can use the lake. After they're 18, um, at that point, they are considered adults. 
then uh, they can purchase a place on a lake and uh, uh, buy a home and be an active member. We're subject to both state and federal law. So basically, if you've got, uh, if you're appointed to as a custo custodian to children, or there is you on the taxes they're claimed, then it should be a no-brainer. But again, things have changed in the last 10, 15 years, and they and they need to be addressed because that is not a um, situation that we can tolerate. Times, times have definitely changed, and I believe, I'm not sure the full scope, but in the Strategic Planning Committee, a portion of that, uh, one of the recommendations under an objective and goal is to review um, bylaws for potential updates, um, look at what might be outdated, and then recommend changes and, and move forward from there. So I, I'm definitely for it, and I believe some of that is already in motion. He took the words right out of my mouth. It is in the strategic, I can't speak anymore, plan uh, to be uh, the bylaws and rules and regulations to be reviewed. Um, and I personally feel that if there's a bylaw change, I believe it's 51% of the membership has to vote, which is a large number of people, households, but you know, it doesn't keep us from putting a change in the bylaw out there and either it passes on its merit or doesn't pass because of the lack of participation, but that shouldn't keep us from trying to pursue changes. Uh, everybody else has said, you know, that the same thing that I'm interested in as far as bylaws. I, I think that we need to look uh, as, as society has progressed and, and grow with our regulations and so forth. And I think maybe if we talk to our solicitor and find out if there was some way to put a regulation in, that would suffice to the, uh, the situations such as this, where we can, where we can let a, uh, a resident who has legal, legal, uh, children be able to let them enjoy the facilities just like anybody else had. I think I'm with everybody else on this. You've already kind of heard the definition of family has changed drastically in the last 20 years or so. And we need to be sensitive to that and in line with that. If you have children that live with you, that are your dependents, they should be able to have the same privileges at the pool and using the lake as my kids do. And, uh, you know, my daughter's 33, but she lives with us. You know, it's, it's just sensible. You know, they talk about the whole thing of the reasonable man. So let's be reasonable here. And if they, you know, we're not telling people to just visit on weekends, but well, maybe even there if it's a divorce situation. You know, it's let's just be reasonable and stop worrying so much that one uh, couple of kids might use the pool that aren't your blood relatives, but if they live in your household and are part of your household, they have the right. Jay, that was the record 13 uh, minutes and 49 seconds. Uh, it was a double question, so uh, there's an asterisk, but we have, so far you have the high points. Uh, do we have uh, perhaps one more question? Uh, it seems like we're kind of petering out now. We were going to go to the three, soft landing. Maybe this is time to land softly. Uh, any other question? Going once, going twice. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Can we give the candidates a